Hello my fellow gamers, my name is Peter and welcome to my third advanced battle tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you some tactics and maneuvers that you can do in battles. This video could not have been made without the help of Yao Mile, one of my friends who plays Rome 2 with me. And the four maneuvers that I'm going to show you are called pull back, push through, cross the T's, dot the I's, stretch and absorb, and the last one is called say hello to my little friend. Okay, so let's start. Battle maneuver number one. Pull back, push through. We have two lines of infantry which are about to meet and engage. Behind them, there are two cavalry units on standby. As the infantry charges each other one versus one, the cavalry goes near the middle. Now, just before the lines meet, the two middle infantry units are going to pull back and to the side. This effectively creates a hole in the middle through which you can send your two cavalry units. Once the cavalry is behind the enemy lines, you can choose whichever unit you wish to attack, either flank them or back attack them, and this is going to end the infantry battle pretty fast. Now let's do this in the actual game. Ok, I already know what you're thinking. This is not an actual battle. Your friend knows what you're doing. He's going to let you do it. Ok, I understand that. This is a demonstration to show you how this can be done. Whether you can actually pull this on the battlefield is for you to test out. Pretty much the only requirement for these tactics to succeed in an actual battle is just for your enemy not to see them. If you pull off this maneuver in a 20 vs 20 battle, I can guarantee you 100% that there are going to be times when your enemy is not going to notice and you are going to pull it off. A human player cannot be everywhere at the battlefield at the same time. He can see the entire battlefield, but he cannot command the entire battlefield at the same time. So before you disregard these maneuvers as impossible to pull off on the battlefield, just try to think about what I said. One thing that you're seeing right now is key to all these maneuvers. Sometimes you just have to spam the move order on your key. You have to click 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 click, click, click until the unit moves to where you want them to move. The benefits of pulling off a maneuver like this are immense. You are capable to do back and flank attacks instantly with cavalry, which means that you can do hit and run attacks, attack one unit, pull back and attack another unit the same way. The cavalry units that you need for these kinds of maneuvers don't even have to be expensive or powerful. They can be simple light cavalry because all they need to do is inflict morale penalties. As you can see these two infantry units are now wavering and are soon going to rout because they have been pinned from the front by infantry, attacked from the back by cavalry, which is called a hammer and anvil attack, and now they are routing. As I said, this is just a demonstration of this maneuver. In an actual battle you may come across several problems when you try to pull this off. The enemy might have two lines of infantry or just some reserves that are going to plug the hole. He might have his own cavalry close by and prevent you from doing any back or flank attacks. So you have to understand what's going on at the moment in the battlefield and what units are available to you and your opponent before you can think about which maneuver you can execute. The next battle maneuver is called cross the T's and dot the I's. It is quite similar to the first maneuver but with one important difference. You're not going to be pulling back your infantry but changing their formation. While the infantry units are charging at each other across the line you're going to find two units next to each other and change their formation from a horizontal line to a vertical line. As the enemy is charging in a horizontal line, he's going to envelop your vertical line from all three sides. This creates enough of a hole for you to pass through with one cavalry unit. Once you're behind the enemy lines, you can pick and choose which target you want to attack from behind. Now once again, let's watch the demonstration in the actual game. You have to stop the charge of two of your units and change their formation. Once they reform in a narrow line, then you can charge again. Now just watch the magic happen and a hole appear exactly where you need it. It is very important to remember to put your cavalry in a narrow enough formation that it can pass through that hole. Now comes the part where you have to spam the move order behind the enemy lines. Once you are clear of the infantry, you can spread your cavalry unit as far as you can and then attack both units at the same time. As you can see, my cavalry unit has managed to spread its forces even to attack three units at the same time. Now they are going to route much faster than the unit that does not have any cavalry units attacking it in the back. The fourth unit is actually going to receive a lot more morale penalties. It is going to receive morale penalties because allies close by are running away times three and it is also going to receive moral penalty because now it is all alone and exposed. So even though it did not receive an attack in the back, it is also going to route almost at the same time. Battle maneuver number 3. Stretch and absorb. This is a cavalry maneuver. 
It is used when you have an equal amount of enemy cavalry charging at your cavalry. You take the weakest possible cavalry unit. You stretch it out to take enough space that it can catch all three enemy units at the same time. Then you take your two remaining cavalry units and attack the enemy in the flank or the back. Let's watch the demonstration in the actual game. Let me explain what makes this maneuver possible. When you order a unit to charge at an enemy's unit, it is going to use the shortest and the most direct route. Your unit is not going to go around enemy units that might be in its way. This is an additional bonus for the cavalry unit that is going to absorb the charge, because the enemy units are going to run into it and not charge into it. We are going to be using the same principle in order to make the next maneuver possible. Now again, I know exactly what you are thinking. The enemy player can simply change the orders and avoid charging his 3 cavalry units into your 1. But that is only if you are looking at this engagement from the perspective of just these 6 cavalry units. You have to look at it from the perspective of an entire army's engagement. If the entire army is being engaged at the same time and orders are being given, there isn't enough time to go back and check what your cavalry is doing. Now for the last battle maneuver which I called, say hello to my little friend. Yes, yes, I know I probably butchered the whole quote. Please excuse me if you can do it better. In this instance, we have an infantry line on whose flanks are cavalry units. The second line infantry is a spear unit. The trick here is to charge the enemy cavalry and then back off from that charge, go left and go behind your spear units. The enemy cavalry will now entangle with your infantry while you are free to use the hole between the cavalry engagement and the infantry engagement to get your units up and behind the enemy. I hope this video has been both entertaining and educational. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned for more.